When two power-driven vessels are meeting on reciprocal or nearly reciprocal courses, so as to involve risk of collision, each shall alter her course to starboard so that each shall pass on the port side of each other. This is commonly known as a head-on situation or a meeting situation. It's relatively straightforward most of the time, except when it's not. Breaking down the rule a little bit, there is a little bit of nuance that's worth discussing. First of all, it requires two power-driven vessels. Both of these vessels need to be power driven. There can't be three vessels or four vessels. There needs to be two vessels. They also need to be meeting on reciprocal or nearly reciprocal courses. Reciprocal means opposite. So in this case, they're clearly on opposite courses, but so are these vessels. So are these vessels. So are these vessels. They're on opposite courses, reciprocal courses. So there needs to be risk of collision. Risk of collision is defined elsewhere in the rules, but if there is risk of collision, then each vessel shall alter course to starboard so that they pass on the port side of each other. And that risk of collision piece is really the crux of the matter. Risk of collision exists when the compass bearing of an approaching object does not appreciably change. So if the compass bearing of an object, like the bearing that you see it at, is relatively the same over a course of a few minutes, risk of collision does exist. But that's a little bit left up to debate. Right, so in my experience, if I see a very slight change in the compass bearing of an object, I might think that there's no risk of collision. Whereas in your experience, if you see a very slight change in the, in the relative bearing of an object, you might think that risk of collision does exist. And so if these two boat operators have different expectations of risk of collision, that's where this dance of death could lead to tragedy. The rules also say that a situation shall be deemed to exist when a vessel sees the other ahead or nearly ahead. So if you're the purple vessel, you see the blue vessel ahead or nearly ahead. And by night, you could see the mast headlights of the other in a line if the vessel is over 50 meters, or both side lights. And by day, you observe the corresponding view. So if you're underway and you see a vessel in this orientation or this or this or this, you know, that is definitely a head-on situation. If you're ever in doubt as to this situation, whether this situation exists, you assume that it does and act accordingly. So a good example of where this situation can go awry is a situation like this, where two vessels, you know, there's only two vessels, there's not more than two, they're both power-driven vessels, they're on reciprocal or nearly reciprocal courses, does risk of collision exist? Well, I don't know. In this vessel's mindset, maybe it does because the CPA is going to be quite close. In this vessel's mindset, maybe it does not exist because they're clearly going to pass down the starboard side of this other vessel. So the problem therein lies with the head-on situation. If this vessel thinks that there's risk of collision or is in doubt, they should alter course to starboard. But if they let this vessel get closer and closer and closer until they decisively act, they could be turning right in front of the other vessel. Likewise, uh, if this vessel does not think that there's risk of collision, well, they're gonna just keep their course and speed and carry on. And at the last minute, if some other vessel cuts right in front of them, that's a problem as well. So this dance of death is, is happening when two vessels are getting closer and closer at a very fast rate of speed, and people on the bridge are just like trying to debate what's going on or discussing it or thinking it through in their head, when the best way to avoid this little wiggle at the end here is to take decisive action early, early and substantial action in accordance with the rules. Alter course to starboard, you'll let this other vessel know exactly what you're thinking and they will act accordingly. Let's take a look at some radar examples of these head-on situations and how you could interpret them. In this simulation, we're aboard a naval vessel. We're heading towards uh, Oahu, maybe to Honolulu Harbor. We're steering a course of about 090 and um, we're steering into a nice beautiful morning and on our radar we have detected a vessel kind of off of our bow and so this um, this vessel you know we're going to acquire it on the radar and we're going to see what information pops up now you could do a maneuvering board if you're interested in that kind of stuff you could definitely do a maneuvering board but um, you know we're going to see what the arpa has to say about this vessel so it just takes a second or so uh, for it to do some calculations in the background, and then we'll be able to get the course and speed of this other vessel. So there, it's just popped up, and then right now, you know, it's um, on a bearing of 090, it's 10 miles away, it has a CPA of almost nothing, the time to CPA is about 22 minutes, the course of this vessel is about 270, and it's due in 12 knots. So this is a vessel that we just detected, and we've only got 20 minutes to figure out what's going on to solve this collision situation. 
you can't quite see it out there because it's blinded by the sun, but you know, we rely on the rules of the road. If this is a, a power driven vessel, you know, first things first, we would clearly get on the radio and make a call to make some passing arrangements. But for whatever reason, if it doesn't work, we can fall back on the rules of the road. The rules say if, uh, unless otherwise agreed, two power driven vessels. So there's two of us, we don't have any other vessels involved. We're on uh, reciprocal or nearly reciprocal courses, so opposite courses, and there is risk of collision, which I would define certainly as a 200 uh, yard CPA. Each shall alter course to pass port to port. And you know, basically the vessels may have different comfort zones. So if I'm on a naval vessel, maybe I'm a young ensign, I don't have a lot of experience, you know, I need to get on the phone with my captain and I'm working all this out. Well, this is all happening very, very fast. The right thing to do is simply make a big course change to starboard, show that other vessel a different aspect. Um, they will clearly see different navigation lights. They'll clearly see, you know, um, you know, a different aspect on you. So 25 degrees is, is a great course change to make. And we'll see this CPA start opening up. And we're not even gonna make this other vessel maneuver. We're just gonna leave them as a robot course. Like maybe they're on autopilot and they're not paying attention but they're doing 12 knots at uh, course 270 and we need to open that CPA up um, kind of fast. Remember, we did this 20 minutes away as soon as I detected that vessel on a 12 mile scale. And you'll see like, if we didn't act this fast, it would get pretty tricky. So this is a clear cut case of a head on situation where on exactly opposite courses, there's no CPA, there's no ambiguity. And so even if that vessel doesn't alter course, I'm gonna follow the rules. I'm gonna make a big course change to starboard we're gonna pass port to port and we'll just let this situation play out. We'll fast forward it in the video. Okay, well, we've pretty much reached our CPA. We've just got about 30 seconds or so left until we're at our closest point of approach. You can see that that vessel did not maneuver. We put the trails on permanent and it consistently kept its 270 course. And just to point out, this is in relative motion vectors with true trails, if you're curious about that. Uh, but yeah, so we passed about two and, two and a half miles away. It took uh, 20 minutes or so to make that maneuver. And depending on your standing orders or what your captain wants you to do or what you're comfortable with, you know, you could have changed course at any point in there back to 090 uh, to maybe make it a one mile CPA or a two mile CPA, etc. But bottom line, we did not collide. And that's the point of the collision avoidance regulations or the coal regs. So let's take a look at a different situation where it's maybe not as clear cut as this. OK, this simulation is similar to the last one. We're underway off the coast of Hawaii, heading into a beautiful sunrise, and we have detected on our radar another vessel just off the starboard bow, just like barely off the starboard bow in this case. And um, the question is like, is this a head-on situation? Well, the head-on situation says two power-driven vessels, which we've got, um, you know, meeting or on reciprocal or nearly reciprocal courses. So I'm on a course of 090, it's on a course of, uh, you know, 270 basically. So we're on reciprocal or nearly reciprocal courses. Um, and then is there risk of collision? So that's the question. Is there risk of collision? If there is, both vessels should alter course to starboard and pass port to port. If there's not, there's no situation. So the challenge with this and why we call it the dance of death is we've got two vessels, right? I'm closing at 14 knots. It's closing at uh, 12 knots. This is all happening fast. We've got 18 minutes to figure this out and we've got a CPA of about half a mile or so. Is there risk of collision? Well, if I'm a very experienced mariner and, uh, you know, I routinely operate close to other vessels, maybe there's not risk of collision. But if I'm on a naval vessel, I'm a new ensign, the standing orders maybe give me some guidance on that, maybe there is risk of collision. And so the problem is if on one vessel, they think there's risk of collision, and on the other vessel, they don't, we can get up in a situation where like we get really close really fast without figuring our stuff out. So obviously the best thing to do is get on the radio and, and clarify the situation. Um, agree that it's a, a head-on situation and you're gonna pass port to port. But uh, you know, absent that, the next best thing you can do is act early and substantially to indicate to the other vessel that you do think there's a risk of collision. 
Therefore, you do think it's a head-on situation, and therefore, both vessels should alter course to starboard. If you wait and hem and haw until you're super close to this other vessel, you're just going to end up cutting them off, cutting in front of them. So the best thing you can do in any type of ambiguous situation is, number one, get on the radio and clarify it, but number two, act like the rules say. And so if you do so, if you make a large, early, and substantial course change, you know, 25 degrees is a good amount in this case, um, what you're going to do is you are going to convey to the other vessel that you think this is a head-on situation and therefore everybody should alter course um, in this case. So right now you are changing your aspect to them. So they're going to see instead of your starboard bow, they're going to see your port bow. You can see the sun is kind of drifting to the left there. Um, likewise, on their radar, they're going to see the CPA get smaller, which is maybe a little bit weird, but they're going to understand what's going on. And so, you know, this vessel should act accordingly and they should also change course to starboard and everything's going to be good. But, uh, but we'll put the target trails on and, and we'll make this other vessel change its course as well um, because you did the right thing. Early and substantially, you made a course change to starboard so that both vessels will pass port to port. And so that other vessel, it may take a few minutes, but they'll also change their course, uh, you know, 20 degrees or so to starboard and everything will be perfectly fine. Once again, you know, the radio is the best way to do this, but if you can't, then uh, acting early and substantially is the best thing that you can do. It may seem like you're crossing their bow and cutting them off, but you're doing what the rules say. There was risk of collision in your mind, and the rules even say if you're ever in doubt as to risk of collision, you know, you assume that it does and you act accordingly, and you'll always be in the right. So we'll let the situation play out. You can see what happens. Everything is going to be nice and safe. But uh, yeah, that dance of death as you're getting closer and closer super fast, you need to decide what to do and make your course change from there. So do the right thing. Follow the rules of the road. All right, so as we're approaching CPA, we've got about 30 seconds or so left. You can see that this situation unfolded well. You know, you made a very early and substantial course change. The other vessel responded. Again, if you could talk on the radio, so much the better, but uh, the situation worked out well. You know, you might be saying like, well, it'd be much more efficient if we just agreed to pass starboard to starboard, and that's fine. The rules do say unless otherwise agreed, but in this case, you know, you didn't have radio contact or whatever the case may be. So you need to make the correct rules of the road decision and uh, indicate your your intentions uh, clearly to the other vessel. If you just wait until you're, you know, six or seven minutes away from CPA, it's going to be a dangerous situation. So early and substantial action is going to be the key in this case. And then you can kind of make your course change back to 090 and get back on your way to Honolulu.